Day 56, how are you? So we're revisiting Lick of the Day 44 and 45, I think it was. Now remember, we played over a G7 with no quick change. It went like um, this. Now we're going to take these three ideas and we're going to play them over our blues with the quick change, right? But these are these concepts are important. So the lick is all right, but you know, not just a lick, I want you to learn the concept, right? So look, first thing is we're gonna learn is a, um, what we call an enclosure. Now you gotta learn the chord tones first. We're gonna step away from the pentatonic scale here. Although that's great. But look, here's the chord tones, G7. So you can approach these from a half step below or a scale tone above. And when we talk about a scale tone above, we're talking about the C major scale. G7 is the five chord of C major. So C major is the scale that's going to work. That looks like this. Right, so a scale tone above. Now, we can do scale note above, chromatic below. And that's where that original lick comes from. Now, the next thing is we have to learn the arpeggio arpeggios that are in that key. We're in C major, so G7, A minor, B minor 7 flat 5, C major, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, G7, uh, A minor 7, and then B minor 7 flat 5. They're all going to fit, right? So all these are possibilities when we're playing over a G blues, over a G7 chord, right? So um, next, we can approach the arpeggios we can approach all these arpeggios by half steps too underneath these are all great sounding ideas for a g7 chord when we're playing over it so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to approach this arpeggio by a half step, right? And then I'm gonna go down Barry Harris's chromatic scale from there. Now remember, we're playing that C major scale. But according to Barry's rule with the chromatic scale is that if there's, a, a, if notes are a whole step apart, you can put a chromatic note in between, so. But between the F and the E, there's only a half step. So we jump back to the next note and then play the E. Right? So um, that's how I'm going to start this lick. It's going to go like this one, two, three. That's as far as we can go, though, because, look, one, two, three, that's going to be one. One, and two, and three, and four, and, right? That's as far as we can because the chord's going to change, so C chord. So we got to try to approach a note in that C chord. So I'm going to go like this. And there's the C chord, so I'm going to get the third of that C chord. And just play down an arpeggio. Now, I'm going to use that enclosure concept 
and uh, get that G chord when it comes around in bar three. I got to start on uh, on on beat four though, because I want that chord tone to be on the strong beat, right? On the first beat of that G chord. So I'm going to go one, two, three. One, two, three. Now this note is going to be the strong beat of the next G7 chord in bar four. Four and one and two and three and four and one. And then I'm going to walk up Barry scale. But remember, between the B and the C, there's only a half step, so I got to jump to the next note above. Now I can go up chromatically from there and chromatically from there. Now the E and the F have a half step, so I got to jump to the next note, which is a G. And where does that leave me? Um, one, the end of four, right? One and two and three and four and... Now I'm going to approach that E note for the C chord again in bar five and play a C arpeggio from there. E is the third, C is the root, the flat seven, and then the fifth. So the whole lick all together goes like this. So these concepts are, you know, a little bit challenging, especially if you don't come from a jazz kind of background, but you can do it. And if you need some help, go get the PDF. Those are a dollar and there's five a month. So it's $5 a month. And um, you help sponsor these lessons by, you know, becoming a uh, patron at Patreon. Okay. So um, have a nice day and check out the demo. Goodbye.